Greetings, my noble knights. It is I, Blaze Templar. <coughs> and as you might notice, I actually don't have much of a voice right now. Um, I've tried to record for about half an hour, and unfortunately, I don't have much of a voice to begin with, so I apologize for that. Being sick kind of bites, but I am on the road to recovery, so don't worry about that. It's just taking way longer than it should because it's so cold. Anyway, let's go ahead and talk about the context of this video. So, one of the things that I've noticed for Pokemon players is, at least when you're first starting, is a lack of cohesive vision for your team. So, for example, let's look at this team. Um, I have given, of course, my physical wall to Quagsire, my special wall to Hatterene, um, and then I have a set of other Pokemon as well. Now these other Pokemon actually form an important backbone. For example, uh, my end goal is to wall break with Staraptor and end the game with Mega Alakazam. Now, um, my other wall breaker actually is, in this case, Melmetal, just because it is insanely physically bulky and it can uh, hit incredibly hard. So I have a couple wall breakers. I have the Choice Scarf um, Rotom Wash, mostly to be a check to a number of things, trick something that I just really don't want to deal with, and then keep fighting with it afterwards. So that's kind of the mindset there. But in the end, my main goal is to win with the Mega Alakazam, because it's fast, it's powerful, and once everything's worn down, Mega Alakazam can pretty much clean up no problem whatsoever. So let's see if that happens here. So he's going to lead the Grim Snarl, I'm going to lead Rotom, and he's just going for the Light Scream now. Uh, Scream. Now the thing I do right away is trick it the scarf because these things like to be prankster and when you have a prankster mom like this they're going to be running a lot of support moves most of the time um so i'm just going to give it the trick right away and put it in a much more difficult situation and then i'm going to willow whisper it willow wisp it so he's going to spirit break i don't care that i did get my special attack dropped i'm just volt switching straight on out to mel metal I don't mind losing special attack on Melmetal. This is a wall breaker, and Spirit Break is really quite weak on Melmetal. Anyway, Earthquake definitely was my play there. Read, read the Pokemon there, no problem. He's gonna Flamethrower. I can take one just because I am a Melmetal and go for the Thunder Punch, except he burns me. <sighs> he burns me. He burns me. So I'm gonna hard switch to Hatterene. This actually does have aromatherapy, so um, my Mel Metal is actually not out of the match quite yet, but he's going to flinch me. Of course he is. Um, this is quite annoying, as I really do need Hatterene to get the hazard or the light screen up and all that fun jazz. So right now I'm just trying to make sure I can do what I need to do. I get my light screen up finally. But he does get a sub, which is super annoying. And he's going to Nasty Plot on top of that, which is even worse. But we're going to get rid of that burn. And uh, now I have to decide basically what's going to take the hit. So I'm going to go into Rotom uh, as he's going to Nasty Plot again. Putting him in a very threatening situation. Volt Switch will break the Togekiss uh, sub. Go into Quagsire because we are unaware. And I should be able to take on Togekiss, no problem. Especially with that Light Screen up which won't last much longer. Unfortunately, I'm on, uh, I am in a bad situation because it turns out I can't break the sub with one skull. So I'm gonna go into Rotom and we're just gonna Volt Switch here. Now his team actually is in a situation that he doesn't really have many special attackers outside of Greninja. So Hatterene isn't the most important, but I'm gonna go into Melmetal as yeah, it would have been nice for, but it was already pretty weakened. And now Star Raptor can just Brave Bird, take out the Togekiss. Finally, that annoyance is gone. In comes the Ninja. I can't stay in. Hatterene is at pretty good health, so we can take that no problem. <clears throat> Not well, but we take it. And now I'm going to use the Protect this turn just to heal up a little bit more um, and to handle the Hydro Pump if he goes for it. Now he's going to Hydro Pump again. Thankfully, he does miss. I'm just going to get a nice Giga Drain off getting us up to respectable health now. And he's gonna go for that Z power now because he needs to take me out, except he doesn't do that, and I get my light screen up. So even a Hydro Pump won't take me out at this range, and I'm gonna Giga Drain, get some more health. Um, 
And this was before I knew about the fairy uh, kiss move recovering 50%, so that's why I'm running that there. But anyway, hard switch into Rotom as it deals with Metagross, and Mega Metagross even better. Uh, I don't really think it does better, I just said that for some stupid reason. This is what happens when you're sick and you're not thinking clearly. But Will-O-Wisp does make Metagross not exactly a threat. We're going to Hydro Pump. Miss the Hydro Pump. Unfortunate. And uh, he's just able to Rock Slide take us out. Definitely annoying there. But I do have Quagsire. It does deal with Metagross. No problem, especially because he's burned. Um, and at this range, Quagsire is going to be just fine at dealing with Metagross one-on-one. -on -one. So we're going to speed up a little bit just to get through that. In comes the Greninja again. We're going to go straight to Hatterene and we're super light because Hatterene is apparently. And so I think, oh, I could take a Hydro Pump, right? No, well, of course not. I should have known better, but actually that's okay because now we can go into Mega Alakazam, trace the protein, and Dazzling Gleam turns us into a fairy. Greninja goes down and now you have Protein Alakazam and I have Focus Blast. So I'm going to go straight for that, and that's a Focus Blast from a Fighting-type Mega Alakazam. Take out the Tyranitar's quad weak to it. And now I'm going to go for the Focus Blast again. Um, honestly, I probably should have gone for the Diamond, or the Dazzling Gleam, but I really just wanted to finish off Grimmsnarl with a couple Focus Blasts. Unfortunately, we missed both. So if I had just gone for Dazzling Gleam, I probably would have taken him out, no problem, but... You know, doesn't happen that way. And we're just going to Skull, start to wear this thing out. And he's locked into Spirit Shackle, or Spirit Break, because of uh, the Scarf from earlier. And we can just spam Skull. It's game at this point. We both know it. And so we're just going to keep going. And so that's basically it. But if I hadn't missed those two Focus Blasts, I would have gotten the sweep with the Alkazam at the end. And that was kind of the objective of the team. That was what I was after with it. And honestly, if you have a clear set goal on what your victory is and how to achieve it when you build your team, you will oftentimes do far better. Even if you don't have the standard you know, builds, like uh, fire, grass, water cores um, are recommended, especially for starter players because they are easier to adjust to. Um, but as you can see, I actually ran double water and no grass or fire. So if you know what you're doing um, and you have that kind of a, you know, vision and know what your opponent's vision is to victory, you can work around it and use your own to come out on top. Now, this isn't something you can just learn overnight, but it is something you can learn by watching other players, by asking yourselves questions like, okay, how do I win? What's my way of overcoming the opponent? What is my victory condition, basically? And play to those victory conditions. This is something that a lot of players don't do. Um, they'll sacrifice their most important Pokemon. And in a fluid metagame like Pokemon, sometimes your victory condition won't be what you said. Like the Mega Alexam might not always be it. Maybe it'll be the Melmetal or the Rotom Wash, just because of what your opponent has. But that being said, having the ability to identify what your victory condition is with your team and with that battle will make you a far stronger player. And that's what I really want to get at with this particular video. And unfortunately, I don't have much voice and I may come back to the subject later and do it in a more formal way with like a script and stuff, but I'm just too miserable to do that at the moment and I really want to get... <coughs> <clears throat> get something out for you guys. It's been way too long, and I apologize for that, but, you know, when you're dealing with this gunk, you kind of have to focus on health. So, anyway, I will be back as soon as possible, and hopefully uh, with a lot more content. Uh, I do have stuff planned for the 25th of February with the Mega Man Zero Collection, assuming I'm actually over this gunk by then. I'm hoping so. It's been way too long. But, you know. Anyway, things like that. So I have plans in the near future and Persona 5 Royal, blah, blah, blah. But anyway, my head feels like it's going to split open, like someone's taking a sledgehammer to it. So I am out. See ya.